In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen, will continue. I hope uh, more people brought their Bible um, today to church in any format. <laughs> um, so, so far, we, we talked about uh, or we, we, we studied the first three chapters which talk about God's action towards us, God's um, God's response to our needs, to our brokenness. And the following chapters, um, 4, 5, and 6, it will be about our response to God within the church. Don't forget that um, Ephesians, is about the church. It's, it's, not, it's not about the individual, although the individuals make the church, but as we mentioned before, the simple uh, um, is, in this letter, addresses the church as a group, as one body. We'll start in chapter 4. Verse 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. He wants us to walk worthy and he is beseeching us as if he is begging us, please, please walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. He started by that, I am the prisoner and I am beseeching you that as I have and I'm still paying a very high price for my discipleship, I want you to do the same. I am willing to go into jail, if not into death, because I, I want to follow God's calling for me. So as I am willing and I am already in prison for this calling, I want you to have this intention. Be intentional about your calling. It is the most important thing of our life, our salvation, and our unity in the church. Yes, we are born into this world and we grow up and we understand life in many different ways. Our parents tell us that we have to be successful in school and get a good job and get married and then we, we, we work and we need to be successful in our work and we need to be promoted and take the highest positions. The whole world is telling us how to be successful within a time limit of maximum 80, 90 years, like 100 years if you're so lucky and, and healthy. But what about my eternal calling? If I work so hard to be successful for a time limit of 80 years, how much am I putting to be successful in my eternal years, in my eternal life? That's why he is beseeching us. Think about it, beseeching us like, I beg you, please walk worthy of the call. It is not an easy thing. 
don't take it as, as just a given. Yes, we were just born Christians. We were blessed enough to be born Christians and to be in the church and to be sitting in this place right now. But don't take it lightly. I beseech you, think about it. Think about it, I beseech you. So many people out there, they, they can't find God in their life. They don't have meaning in their life. They are broken. So think about it. I, I beseech you to walk worthy of this calling. And then this is how we should walk with humility, loneliness, and gentleness, long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. He is addressing the church. He is addressing us. So when we come to church and when, we view, when you view your life as a part of the church, how are you walking in the church? How are you behaving in the church? And not just behavior as what we should do, right or wrong, but your mindset. When you come to church, when you talk about the church, when you hear about the church, when you serve in the church, when you see something that you don't like in the church, and when you see that there is a needed service in, in the church. How are you talking about this? How are you thinking? Are you part of it and you are protecting and you, are, um, um, you want to contribute? Or you are on the spectator side and you're saying, this is not done, this is wrong, this is good, this is bad. And you start a long litany of judgment. Loyalness and gentleness. And then, why should we do this? We just, we just come here for two hours and we leave, and half of, of the people I don't know, so why should, should I bear this? Because we are siblings. We are children of one father and one mother. This is why. He's seeing here, there is one body and one spirit. Just as you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, the church teaches us that the baptism is our mother and or the church is our mother. We were born from the womb of the church, which is the baptism. The church father teaches us that the baptism is the womb of the church from which we are born. So we have one mother and one father who is God. He is, he is, Abba. He, he is our father. So on the spiritual level, we are siblings. We are one family. One nuclear family. Father, mother, and children. Do you think of your brothers and sisters do you see today, or you talk about as my brother and my sister, like my bio, Siblings, this is the truth. All of us, we make up this household of God because we are from one father and one mother. In verse 7, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gifts. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and give gifts to men. Now, this he ascended. What does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? 
He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. Now this is tough. <laughs> ascended, descended. The work of the church, the gift of the church as the household of God is dependent on the redemption, the salvation that, that he gave us on the cross. When he died on the cross, he descended into Hades. We believe that it is written in the Bible and, and we say it in the liturgy. He descended into Hades and he saved Adam and all the, all the Old Testament believers that believed and died on the hope that the Messiah will come. So when he saved everybody who believed in him, he ascended into heavens. In his ascension, he, he also descended, not just by saving those who died, but by sending the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit descended on us. Christ died, rose, ascended to heaven, and then sent us the Holy Spirit as a gift to remain with us. And if you remember from chapter 1, we as the church, he rose us up and, let me say it correctly here, it's in verse... He rose us with him and he ascended us with him. We are sitting in the heavens with him as the church. So, being the church, our position is in the heaven. Our status is in the heaven. Our home is in the heaven. But at the same time, we are here on earth. We are one body and he sent us this gift of the Holy Spirit to remain with us. So, As the church, we have spiritual gifts based on the Holy Spirit. In verse, in verse 11, and he himself gave some to the apostles, some of the gifts. Now he will talk about the gifts of the church. Now the church received God's love, God's salvation and redemption. God gave us the Holy Spirit. Now, our response is to serve. Our response is to walk, to follow, to love. How? By the Holy Spirit. Are we, are we all called to be the same? No. We're different, but the Spirit is one. So, he gives some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints of, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of, of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith and of the, of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. This is the reason why we are here for the equipping of the saints. Why? Because we are the factory of saints. This is um, how the church fathers view the church. It is the factory of saints. So, when you come, or when you came this morning, did you come to develop and grow as a saint? Or did you come today because it's Sunday? This is what we do on Sunday. <laughs> it is part of our weekly um, assignments or weekly habits. We, we just come to church and sit nicely, we listen to a boring sermon like this, <laughs> and then attend the Mass, and that's it. No, it is for the equipping of the saints. If you view the church in this manner, how then you would view your brothers and sisters 
and your role in the church and what you need from the church and what you can give to the church. It is the fact you, it is the equipping of the saints. So, God's grace, God's gifts are for everyone, and it is a fact. But it is not just given to me to be a good person or to have my ways in this world. God doesn't give me the Holy Spirit or His grace or His love or His forgiveness just to, for my selfish reasons. God is not a drive through or the church is not a drive through place to receive blessings. I come, get some blessings, and then go back to my personal agenda. No. If God gives grace and gives gifts, it is for your edifying to build you up as his son and his daughter. Not as a businessman or a doctor or a lawyer or accountant or uh, a worker in a factory or in a gas station. This is, not ju this is just things that keep us busy while living for Christ. <laughs> what we do in this life, just things to help us live for the higher purpose, which is that I to be a saint. And this is maybe the, um, the edifying part. This is what we pray in the liturgy. If you come in early and after Abuna right away chooses the, the bread to be the Lamb of God, he faces the people and he lifts up the bread and he, and he said that um, um, He said that honor and glory, glory and honor, and, and then a peace and edification to the one holy church. Why? This sacrifice and our gathering is to for peace and more it is for edification of the church, to build us up. We are here to grow and we consecrate this sacrifice for us to grow, grow in love, back to the first paragraph of this chapter, grow in um, gentleness, loneliness, long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. This is our work. We, we come here to work. We don't come here to receive stuff. Receive urbana, receive yeah, communion, receive relationships, which is very important. But number one priority is that we come here to work. Work for what? Work for peace, work for love, work on our weaknesses, which we discover when I deal with my brothers and sisters, because we, we all have weaknesses. And I will discover them, I will know my faults when I deal with my siblings, right? I will have an angry brother, I will have uh, a worried sister, I will have uh, like unorganized uh, cousin. Uh, uh, uh. We have many things many weaknesses, and when we deal with each other, I want to discover my weaknesses, not to point the finger at my brother or sister's weakness. That's why we come here to work. That's why whenever you hear someone talks about the church. What is your first duty? Is to, yes, is to continue the, the conversation and, and let's bring up more drama and more judgment or to think, what is my calling? 
What is my job? Is it to fix? Is it to build? Or am I here to break and to tear down and to destroy? And yes, the church is not and not and not and not. I can just make up a long list of what the church is not doing and how frustrating is the church and how the people are nasty, how the people are loud and different and they are not... Don't let me start. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> so, what is my duty? Back to verse 12. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. We here to be, to have one faith and to know the Son of God. If you come here or if you have been here in the church, whether in Cleveland, whether in like any place, if you have been in the church of Christ, let's measure how far did you come to know the Son of God during your life in the church? Can you compare or measure your knowledge and your understanding of God? Who God is? How God works in your life? What is God's view of your life and, and for your life? Can you just compare it now to maybe a year before or two years or ten years? Do you know more? Do you understand more? And I don't mean that do you know by the, how much of knowledge, book knowledge, or facts you gather from bits and pieces of sermons and Sunday school um, meetings, but how much do you understand of God? How much do you understand yourself? How much did you grow? Or have you grown since you started until now? And it says here, it is for the work of ministry, edifying and equipping the saints for the work of ministry. What is your service? It, it is not just the factory of saints, but it is the factory of servants and witnesses to God's love. Do you witness to God in your life? You don't have to be um, a Sunday school teacher or, uh, or, or a deacon or anything, but do you witness? Do you minister to people? When people see you, when people see you and, and, and deal with you, do they get hungry for God or they turn away from God? This is not what I want in my life. This is the measure by your witness, not by sermons and speeches and judging people, but when people at work, for, for an example, when they deal with you, do they get thirsty for God? This woman is really different. This man is different. So the measure that you are growing and you are being equipped to be a saint is that people, when they see you, they say, yes, I, I want this. I want this. In verse um, 13, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So this is, these are your limits. <laughs> the fullness of Christ, 
to a perfect man or woman. These are your limits. So, as they say, the sky is the limit, but it is even further than the sky. Because when you, are, when you deal with an unlimited God, you receive unlimited gifts and wholeness and perfection. You are also unlimited human being. So don't think of yourself that this is what I can do. I just, I just come to you know, church and I try to be a good person. I try to be at peace with uh, people at work and at home. This is what I can do more. If you say, I cannot do more, you understand nothing of what God can do in your life. And sometimes we, we, we are afraid of admitting this fact that, yes, God can do many things in my, in my life, but I'm afraid. I would like to have control over my life. So I just put God at, uh, at bay. I just put God where, where he belongs, in, in the church. When I pray, sometimes God is... He is in the Bible, he is in the prayer, he is in the church. But beyond that, let me take care of it because I am so fearful that I will give up my life to God that he would really change it and it will then be against my agenda and everything I have been taught. So we are just afraid to surrender. But just let me finish by this, is that if you come here to, to the factory of saints, be one. Be one. He said that, be holy as I am holy. And the beauty of this verse is, uh, is that it, it is not just be holy because I am a holy God and I command you to, to be holy, no. But be holy because I can make you holy. Because I am holy, you can be holy. This is the beauty of the church. This is the beauty of our life with Christ, is that because he is pure, he makes us pure. Because he is holy, he makes us holy. So, simply, because I am all of this, be this. Because I am holy, be holy. You can do that. And the church is the perfect place for this. Yes, my individual life and my inner life and my own room and my own quiet time with God are as important, but I cannot live without the church because it is my mother. Again, look at or look around, but with the eyes of Christ, with the sunglasses, not sunglasses, with the glasses of, of young Christ. Um, I can see my sisters and my brother because we were born from one mother back there in the baptism. It is the womb of the church. And from one father. So the will of your father and your mother is to be a saint. Exactly like the will of your biological father and mother is to be successful, to do good at school, to be this and that and you try to follow through. This is the will of your heavenly Father. And if you, and if you, are, if, if you are telling him, your, uh, thy will be done. So you are actively seeking his will to be done in your life. We don't say, this prayer to make him yani, happy. Thy will be done, your kingdom come. We don't say it to make God happy. Look at the way you say it. 
you say it in one second, two seconds time, and we just say it, but we don't dwell on it. Let's say it today, and let's pray the liturgy today, not to make God happy and, and tell him what, he, what we think he wants to hear. No. But be intentional about your prayer and mean what you say. Mean what you say, because if you come to this factory of saints and you leave out not molded, not shaped, not a final product, um, it's really a waste of your time. A waste of your time. God is so gracious and so loving that despite all our faults and, and weaknesses, He still believes in us. He still wants us to be holy. And He will do everything He can to make us holy, whether by suffering, by difficult people, by pain and brokenness. He will allow it in our life until we get it, until we get it. But if we don't get it, we will view life as not fair, not worth it, people are tough, people are mean, the church, the business, my job, my family, and the whole world. But if you get it, you will have a different view of your life. You will have a different view of the world. So let me just end by the reason that you are here is to be equipped as a saint, is to be a perfect person until to the measure of Christ's stature, which, which means with no limits. Ask and you shall receive. And don't just and ask for success and a wife and a husband and a good job and a car. We all need this and we all need to ask for it. But if your God is bigger than just a wife or a job, would you ask him for more? Because he wants you to be holy. He will make you holy. Ask and you shall receive. And just open your eyes and Tell him, God, show me how you want me to, to, to be holy. Show me and let me be flexible in your hands. To him all glory forever. Amen.